Yo Bucio, my name is Sanal Pam, and today I'll put in my hands to work on my very first doll repaint. I've been watching a lot of doll repaints in my spare time recently, and gotten inspired to do my own. Since it's my first time, I'm going in knowing it's not going to be perfect, meaning both the doll and my camera skills. I apologize in advance, but hopefully you and I both get something fun and entertaining this go around. I'll be using a Monster High Laguna doll from the Mad Science series. Since she has aquatic features, I'll be using that and her skin tone as the base for my design. Her arm likes to fall off if you try to position it too much. I think this is a common problem with Monster High dolls, so hopefully my technique on fixing this can help you guys out too. Let's get into it! Since I'll be using her original hair, I decided to give it a nice wash. Under warm water, rub in shampoo thoroughly and rinse. Then put in the conditioner and brush the hair from the bottom to the top. If hair is extremely damaged, I've heard you can also use fabric softener after rinsing the conditioner. Once everything is rinsed out thoroughly, dry it with a hair dryer or a paper towel depending on your level of patience. After wiping her face off with nail polish remover- no? Uh, okay, that's wrong. Uh, okay. After using a fresh bottle of 100% acetone, she gets a base layer of MSC, or Mr. Super Clear. Uh, make sure you go outside or in a well-ventilated one working with this stuff. Uh, after that, she is ready for her brand new face. Starting off with Durant watercolor pencils, I sketch out the eyes and facial features. I immediately decided I wanted to base her design off of a type of eel. I originally had this concept for a scavenger, pirate-esque character, but it didn't sit right. So instead, I went into it with no plan at all, only thinking about the blue ribbon eel as I went along. The blue ribbon eel has a yellow streak from the center of its face way down to its tail. Uh, with the yellow watercolor pencil, I outlined the streak and filled it in, and then added another layer of yellow pencil once applying another layer of MSC. It probably would have made more sense for the color of the eyebrows to be blonde to match her hair, but I often draw darker eyebrows when I draw, so that's what I did here. In her initial design, she had a blind eye and a scar. It was a bit difficult to figure out how to make that one eye look blind, but I think it turned out well. I used slightly desaturated colors on the blind eye that I used for the seeing eye, and then I later added a watered down acrylic white paint to desaturate the pupil even more. I find the watercolor pencils to be a good outline for shapes and general coloring, but the acrylics really make it pop. It may be because of my small color range when it comes to the pencils, but I wasn't able to achieve the look I wanted with pencils alone. One thing to note is the importance of watering down your acrylics. Although it takes longer to get a saturated color, it minimizes streaks and visible paint strokes. I think the whites of the eyes suffered the most. I also had to keep going back and forth fixing and touching up little mistakes, because little mistakes on a small surface area equals big mistakes and very noticeable ones. But just take your time and things will turn out okay. And always take breaks and stop, look, and know when to stop. I finished her face with some gloss nail polish over the eyes and lips, but I'll think next time I'll have to use a glossy varnish to get the real desired, like, wet, shiny, lively look. With watered down acrylics, I painted the stripe down her back, which will ultimately lead to her tail. On her hands, I covered the web parts of her fingers with yellow to help with contrast and color balance. I also went in with blue to bring out the curves of her hands and color her nails. On her body, I added chalk pastels for blushing to give her more life. I sprayed her whole body with one final layer of MSC. For her leg fins and tail, I take some yellow, blue, and teal felt. The teal connects the pieces together and leaves a gap for the wire. Drill a hole where the wire needs to go and glue it into place. Then fit the tail over like a sock and glue that into place. I initially used a little bit of hot glue to keep the tail in the place that I wanted to and then strengthened it with fabric glue. The leg fins follow a similar process, although no wire is involved. I glued the tip of the felt that was away from her leg so that it would maintain its shape. This is how my workstation has progressed throughout this entire project. It's just wonderful. It's time for a special special snack. Mm, yes, 
the end in these mids. So satisfying. Ugh, I wish I was past me right now eating that. Mm. I have more, it's just I have to control myself. Meanwhile, she is tied to the fan to dry because of my lack of patience. Now that that's over, it's hair time. Removing the head guard, I realized I missed the edges of her face while doing the face up, so I'll be styling her hair to help cover it up. To start styling, tie her hair back with a little lower than the desired length with a rubber band, then cut it off as straight as you can. It's not perfect, but with little trimming and evening out, I don't think it looks too bad. With her hair being shorter, the top of her head looked a little sparse. Luckily, the hair I cut was long enough to be reapplied. Laying down the hair on a plastic bag, I made wefts section of section pieces of hair and glued down the ends. Once dry, peel it off the plastic bag and trim the edges and apply them to the stall scalp. Since I'm strengthening the part, I'm applying the hair backwards, then flipping it over and pressing down once the glue is dry. The braid on one side resulted in really curly hair I couldn't fix, so I made a ponytail tucking that section hair away, which is now hidden by the rest of her hair. I decided to leave in the other braid, but instead I undid it and made it a bit tighter and secured the end, once again with an elastic band. Since I wanted the front baggy bang piece of her hair to sit right against her face, I bent a wire to the desired width, held the hair in place, and put the wire directly into her head. And I also took a clothing needle into her head to keep her braid from standing up. The first thing I did was just wrap around a little piece of hot glue and wait for it to dry when, and then stuck it in to make sure that it fit. But then when I took the arm out again, it left the glue inside the arm socket, which is not the way to go. I did not like that. Instead, I wrapped the hot glue around it again, and then while it was still hot, I shoved it into the arm socket, and now it doesn't come out. It likes to, like, inch out a little bit where you have- but it doesn't fall out, so you're not gonna lose your arm then. It is an improvement. To accommodate her huge tail, I made a sort of apron dress with crossing straps. Using her previous tube dress, I carefully ripped the seams and made a general pattern for the sizing of the apron. Adding a bit of space for seam allowance, I cut the piece out of cotton fabric. I, I was a bit lazy and hot glued the whole garment together, cutting slits in the apron to get the curved edge. It's sturdy enough, but it's a bit stiff, so I'll try to be more patient and sew clothes in the future. Her backpack is made out of plastic bags. Take a plastic bag and fold it to ensure easy and straight cutting. After trimming the handles and the bottom, cut the bag into equal strips. The amount of strips you'll get will depend on the size of the bag, so you might have to cut two bags for the desired amount. Taking six strips, two in each section, braid the sections together. You can add more strips once you reach the bottom by tying them to the old ones. I used two braids for the bag itself and one for the lid. I also braided single strips for the straps and top handle. You got the stitches there, and then I'm going to keep going around until I get to here, to this big blue spot, and then I'm going to start going this way. I'm going to go up instead of around. I'm going to keep going around that way until I get the desired height, and that will probably be very very high from now. Once you get all the way around, it's gonna look like this. Uh, to fi fix the tent, and you just go in there. Uh, it's not too pretty, but then you see all the stitches. I just did a basic like loop type stitch, and then carefully, I already had it inside out, so I'm trying to be careful doing it back again, but just turn it inside out. There you go. And there you have, you do it with a little reshaping, it is a finished basket. The lid is the same process as the bottom of the bag, just going around and sewing it in a circle, and then sewing the extra into the side that you want to be on the inside of the bag. And then once both pieces are made, 
sew them together. And for the handles, take the thinner plastic braid and loop it around to accommodate both the arm straps and the top handle. I ended up using hot glue, but you could sew it if you wanted to. Since it looks a little too new, I desaturated the whites of the plastic with watered down brown and green paint. I'd paint it on with a brush and then rub it off with a paper towel, letting it stain the plastic and not completely cover it. With that last piece put together, it's time to dress her up. For my first doll, I really like her. Trying something new is a really fun learning opportunity, and I can see myself doing this a lot more in the future. There are definitely things I need to work on, like I think her eyes are getting kind of lost in all the dark blue details, and hairstyling definitely isn't my forte. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Your thoughts and comments are always appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day. Toodles!